Hey everyone and welcome to this Cubase tutorial. My name is Marcus and today we're going to be looking at customizing uh, some of the features for our individual tracks and also the inspector over here on the left. So I'm going to get straight into this. Some of you may experience that Cubase likes to chop off long name tags. As you can see here I've got three channels which I've created and they've all got some very long winded names to them. For those of you working with large projects, it's nice to be kind of precise about what you, you write so you can find things a lot easier and organize your sessions a lot better. So to fix this, you know, Cubase has some options for it, which you may have overlooked. I know I overlooked them. It's only been recently, actually, that I've actually discovered these myself, as bad as that sounds. But there you go. You live and learn. Uh, so down here in the main track window, you've got uh, three individual icons. You've got the hyphen, the down arrow, and the gear. Now, the down arrow and the hyphen do exactly the same thing. They basically toggle your pictures on and off for your individual tracks. But what we're going to be focusing on is the actual main setup. So if you click on the little gear icon and bring up the track control settings, you'll see that you have get loads of different tabs. Now, as you know, with Keybase, you can create all kinds of different channels, instrument, MIDI, samples, video, you know, you name it. And all the controls uh, for the customization of these channels are in the track control settings. So videos, markers, audio, MIDI, group effects, VCA, folder, instrument, chord, and sampler. Now inside this window, on the left it shows you which controls are hidden, so you cannot see them, and it will show you which ones are visible. These are also rearrangeable, so you can move them around if, say, for example, the uh, record, enable, and monitor, if I want it all the way over to the right, I can just move it all the way down, click apply, and then it's all the way over to the right. This is a very handy little feature because it allows you to just tailor things to how you want. Now the first thing we want to be focusing on is the actual name, uh, the track names up here and increasing the width of this box. Before you do this, just make sure that you give yourself enough room by dragging and you know dragging it out here by clicking on this section. And then go back to your track control settings. And then down in the bottom here you have the uh, controls area preview and you've got track name and control area width. Control area width is the well, you know, pretty much what it says on the tin, the controls down here, all your different buttons, and then the track name width is the actual name. And this graphical representation will change as well to show you how wide each of these have been set. I've got mine, the default is 7, but I need to up this, so you'll have to kind of tinker around to see uh, which is the best for you. So we're going to start at 12 and click apply and there you go, as you can see that's given me plenty of room. Now if you sort of bring it in, let's go down to 10 10's OK. Let's go to 9. You can see that the longer name channels start to get cut off a little bit. So it's always good to kind of just up it. You can even set it to its maximum value if you wanted to. And the only time that it's going to do that thing where it collapses the text is if this is too far over and your tracks are too long. But to just, you know, correct it, just drag that out a little bit. Now the controls area width works exactly the same. I'm going to up this to 14 as well, just because we can. And you won't see any differences when you click apply, but when you insert some of these hidden controls, that's when it will start making a difference. Now, if I just added all these in just because we can, and then click apply, you'll see that they all come across quite nicely like that. Now, if I was to make these a lot smaller, they'll stack on themselves. So it all boils down to how you like to have things organized, really, but the options are there. I'm going to put mine back up to 14. Right, let's just reset that. So some of these hidden controls, you won't find them on all of the different tabs, but it's mainly the audio, MIDI, um, and your instrument channels, with a couple for your chord and sampler as well. One of the ones I like to have enabled on my instrument channels is the freeze function, also with the MIDI, because this saves, this saves you time going over to the uh, the rack on the right and then scrolling through all the different VST instruments you've got loaded then trying to find the specific channel that you'd like to freeze. I'm going to add it into the audio just so I can show you because these are audio channels I've got loaded up here. 
there you go as you can see it's been loaded up so it just saves you a little bit of time when you click on it you know it's a nice little one to have inserted the other thing that i like to have added in is the inserts eqs and sends a control so we're just going to pop that on there as well and as you can see one of my channels i've already got stuff loaded on um, the inserts so i've loaded in an eq i've also messed around with the EQ in the uh, actual channel strip equalizer of the mixer and then we've sent it to the main stereo out I haven't made a you know a special effect send for it it's just to show you how this works so with these buttons here in the uh, track you cannot insert new instruments uh, sorry plugins into your you know chain from here but what you can do is if you've got any loaded up so if i had a couple more let's add a gate in for, just because we can uh, if you've got anything loaded up you can actually navigate to it just by right clicking and then going to it off the list and you can see you know what's what which is good if you you know just need to make a quick tweak and you don't really want to open up the mixer or go to the inserts here but if you want to kind of mess around with your signal chain and drag and drop things around then you're obviously going to have to go to either your inspector inserts tab or go to the main mixer well it's still very handy to have just being able to go oh i want to sort the eq out on that channel now for the actual channel strip eq which is built into cubase there's no special right clicking options for this um you can just basically toggle whether it's bypassed or enabled. Now the sends works again similar to the inserts button. Uh, if you right click on it you can actually open up the channel that it's um, been sent to so you can mess around you know all your different effects on there. In terms of customization for the inspector it's not really that much you can do. I mean if you go to setup all you can do really is hide and enable some of these tracks so if I wanted to add uh, I don't know, a surround can tab I can add that in and you'll see it's popped up or if I want to get rid of it and get rid of me uh, notepad then you can do that but that's pretty much it so I hope you found this video fairly useful and that it's uh, stopped you from going a little bit crazy, especially with the name and thing, because that drove me mad. If you've liked it, give it a big thumbs up. If you've disliked it, give it a thumbs down. I'm not going to take it personal. I don't really care. Um, as long as somebody out there has found this useful, then the same with all of my tutorial videos, which are on the Pound Sound YouTube channel. If they've helped you, awesome. So be sure to subscribe check out some of the links uh, in the box below head over to poundsound.co.uk if you're interested in you know these track icons i make quite a few uh, which is sell off the website and also if you want to read over some of the tutorials that i've got online as well for you beginners uh, you might find some useful information in those as well as always guys i'll see you next time and take it easy